I'd like to start off with the disclaimer that creostote can be carcinogenic and harmful to your health, and I am not recommending in any way that anyone cuts anything with creostote in it. I'm showing you what we're doing today, and actually, I don't know if these contain creostote or not. But if you want my full views on whether this is a good idea or not, stick around to the end of the video. Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms, and today we're going to try to mill these giant railroad beams into some plank lumber. And I published a video already the day I received these, and it's got like 2 million views and 1,500 comments. And the range of reactions in those comments is pretty extreme. But the main thing people are telling me is not to do it. They're already here. I'm just going to see what happens. So first thing we want to do is a test with just a short section. And the ends of these, the last four or five feet, are kind of separated off. And if we can get two bolts out, we can pull one of those small, manageable chunks out and just see how it handles it on the saw. So I'm going to hit it with some PB Blaster. They're bolted together. And then we're going to see if we can just run those bolts out and separate the sections. Yep, she's coming out. Well, it's bent. It's loosening, but it's the wobbling around. Yeah. Now it's going to start getting tight. Yep. And it won't lose leverage to do this. Hey, I got this one. All right. <laughs> So besides the health concerns with creostote, everyone was telling me that it's going to gum up, dull the blades, and that that creostote's going to gum up around the belt and everything. So I'm thinking, what can I use as a lubricant or a cutting oil? And instead of water, uh, I thought about using diesel, but what we're going to try is pine sol. But rather than put that in the, the lube tank above, we're just going to spray it on the blade and see how it does. There's a bad spot in this about two inches down, so we're gonna make our first cut down here and just see what happens. Well, We've made one cut without any disasters, and I've always believed if a little's good, a lot's better, so we should not have any problems for the whole project. Ooh, watch out. Ooh, watch out. Ooh, watch out. Right in the back of the back. Not in the front of the back, but the back of the back. Hey, so the two most popular comments were that you're going to kill yourself, and that second most was probably it's worth it for disc golf. And uh, so that's what we're doing this for. We're building a bridge for a disc golf course. Make it happen, Captain.
that went pretty smooth. I bought into the comments and the longer I thought about this, the more I thought it was gonna be a problem and I started to worry about it and I don't smell anything. There, it does not kick up a bunch of dust. You're not in a cloud of dust when you're working on this. It all goes right in the bucket. And uh, it cuts just fine. There, uh, the blade's not fighting at all. It doesn't feel dull. I'm just gonna keep going. Hey, I'm Rex with Rock Hill Farms coming at you today to say Brock is awesome. Thanks, Brock. We appreciate the help. Yeah. Is that it down? I think you'll be good. You want to put that anchor down? Yeah.
So we are going to go ahead and change a blade because it was getting hard to push and the cut looks rough and kind of stringy, but nothing excessive. And this may be wearing the blade faster, but I don't think it's significant because this was a used blade already and you're normally going to get two to three hours of cut time out of a blade. So we might use one blade out of this whole job. So not bad. We put just a slight amount of pressure on there and then roll it by hand to get it tracking and then tighten it up and roll it. So I decided we had enough footage of the last beam. We didn't need to record this one, but this was buried in it. And we, of course, heard it when it hit. Hey, that mark right there probably ruined the blade. So I'm surprised we've only hit one. There was a second one like this that we were about to cut and one of our teams spotted it. <laughs> so team member here saved me one blade but it looks like this job is going to cost me two blades which is not too bad This is a really nice stack of lumber and it's it's treated i think it's going to make a great bridge these planks are true two inch and they're going to run the same stuff along the beam bolt it to the beam and make the the planks out of this be about five foot wide 40 foot long i think it's going to be there for a long time so now let's go answer the frequently asked questions about milling creostote so the day these beams were delivered i made a long video, 17 minutes, unloading it, doing other stuff. Then I made a short video, like 30 seconds, where I just took the beams off of the trailer. And combined across all platforms, those two videos have about 4.5 million views as of today, which is crazy. And if you think, you know, 4.5 million views, you're talking about thousands and thousands of comments. And those comments talked about a lot of different things, but the biggest, most consistent comment was that I should not mill those beams because of the dangers of creostote. I believe that to be real, and I don't, I'm not discounting it or taking it lightly. So if someone wants my advice, my official advice is don't touch anything with creostote. We did what we did, it worked, and the, getting it on my skin has caused no reactions or anything like that. I don't feel like I was really breathing it because we had a nice breeze or wind going that direction. So, I mean, I feel like it mostly worked out. I think that's going to make a fantastic bridge. I can't wait to see it finished. Most of the other comments were that I should get paid a lot of money for this. And people are saying the range seems to be that I should be charging between $5,000 and $10,000 to do this. And I did it completely free. 
But the caveat is I do get paid when people watch my videos. And I've already got a lot of views and I, this video might make some money or it might not. I don't care. I, I just wanted to do something to help. The two guys that were here helping me today have built this disc golf course completely volunteer, working their tails off on it, trying to help. And maybe I'll get a popular video out of it. Now, what about what's left? There's a full beam and several pieces of the other one. And I'm going to do something better than this with that. That was another comment I constantly got, is those beams are too good to saw up. And I can see that. Although I think that bridge is going to be awesome. I love the idea of that. And they're trying to get this pond sealed where it's across as a body of water where you throw your, you make your throw and then you go around and across the bridge. But the pieces that are left, I believe, are going to be main structural beams on my sawmill building that I'm going to put up. So the next comment I got a lot was I was going to destroy my mill. I don't believe there are any Ill, Ill effects on the mill. It did cost me three blades. Two of them were from dulling them out just from cutting. And the third one is from hitting that, that screw that we didn't notice was in there. But all in all, I couldn't be happier with the progress and how this went. And I appreciate you guys taking time to watch the video. I'll put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos. And I'll see you next time.